the Buddha continued, they say that they have attained what they have not attained, meaning these demonic uh, practitioners, that they have not become Buddha, but they say they are Buddha, okay? And that they have been certified when they have not been certified, meaning the Buddha or any saint have not confirmed that they have reached Buddhahood, a great enlightenment, but they go around and boast that they do, okay? This is the greatest lie, and for this you also will go to the non-stop hell, according to Buddha and other sutra that I read. That's the most heinous lie of all, that you say you attain Buddhahood, but you have not, yeah? meaning deceiving other beings, and then the other beings, they follow you, they also fall into the same pit. That is why it is so bad. Yeah, this is the worst lie you can commit, because you lead other beings into the false views with you too, believing in your power when you don't have. So if you go to hell, they will have to go with you, deceiving, also deprive them from a chance to meet a real living Buddha. And that's why it's the worst sin you can commit, the worst lie ever. In Buddha, they say it's the greatest lie that you can commit, unredeemable. The Buddha won in his monks here, and the future monks, after his nirvana, that should not do that. Yes. But the Buddha cannot warn the whole priesthood or monkhood after his nirvana. Not everybody read this. Not every monk even know this sutra. Okay? You are lucky to know it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Being a monk and nun is a very noble uh, position, but you have to really fulfill that position with nobility, humility, and above all, enlightenment, before you even go out and preach to others and let everybody believe you. A blind lead the blind or fall into the pit. Yeah. Continue. Mm. Perhaps they seek to be foremost in the world. Yeah, fame, fortune. The most venerated and superior person. Buddha suspect that that's why they say they attain Buddhahood when they're not, okay? When they have been confirmed as a Buddha and they are not, okay? So the Buddha is very polite. <laughs> he say, perhaps. <laughs> he doesn't say for sure they want fame and profit. Perhaps they seek to be foremost in the world, the most venerated and superior person. Perhaps not. Yeah. Perhaps I also think maybe perhaps or perhaps not. The reason was that maybe some monks or priests, maybe they just ignorant. Yeah. And then puffed up by <laughs> surrounding followers or passerby or whoever, and then you know, and then he thinks he is really enlightened. <laughs> So perhaps he knows he's not enlightened, perhaps he thinks he's enlightened, yeah, because of circumstances. Not necessarily that he wants fame or profit, it's just by the way, maybe, yeah. So Buddha said perhaps. I also say perhaps so, yes. To their audiences, they say that they have attained the fruition of Shotapana, I mean, some great enlightenment status, yeah. The fruition of a sakrida gamin, the fruition of an anagamin, the fruition of a hardship, the Pataya Buddha vehicle, or all the various levels of bodhisattvahood up to and including the ten grounds in order to be revered by others and because they are greedy for offering. Buddha said, perhaps, all this reason that some people claim that they have become Pataya Buddha or they have become such and such Bodhisattva or just one time only return and never come back again, etc., etc., at different levels. And they want offering from the people, greedy offering. 
because some believers, they offer anything. So that's all the reason the Buddha suspects why somebody proclaimed that they have attained this and that when they have not, okay? Now the Buddha continues, these Ichantikas, meaning the great liars, Ichantika is a Sanskrit term for such kind of people who lie about enlightenment and their saintly status, that's Ichantika. Yeah, not normal liars. These ichantika I mean greatest liar, the worst liar. Yeah, these ichantikas destroy the seeds of Buddhahood, just as surely as a tala tree is destroyed if it is chopped down. A tala tree or any tree, okay? If you chop down a tree, it's chopped down, right? No more chance to live. Similarly, these Ichantikas, I mean the greatest liar people, cut down their seat of future enlightenment of Buddhahood, like a tree being chopped down. This is so bad when you lie about your achievement in spiritual practice. You should never do that. If you lie about something else, mundane way or because of uh, any necessity, good excuses, maybe still can be redeemed. You can still be helped and saved and become Buddha, but if you lie as a Ichantikas, then you're finished. You can never be anywhere near Buddhahood. You cut off your seat of enlightenment, of Buddhahood. So you'll be recycling yourself as ghosts and demons and the most is, you know, low divas in the low heaven or ashura, okay? Have power, have retinues, have followers, have magical power and all that, but you will never become a Buddha. So beware of that. Buddha continued, I command the bodhisattvas and ahabs to appear after my extinction in response bodies in the Dharma ending age. Response body is similar to the uh, light body. Transformation body, light body. You know, not the real physical body, but the appearance of the body in light. So the Buddha appealed to the Buddha, Bodhisattva and the Ahats in the future, use their transformation body uh, in the Dharma ending age, when the Buddha uh, has gone to the Nirvana a long time, maybe three, five hundred years after, and to take various forms in order to rescue those in the cycle of rebirth. Yeah, because Ananda has asked how he can help. So the Buddha keeps saying all this method. And he even appealed to all the uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to help or the sense of beings after he's gone. They should either become shramanas, white robed lay disciples, kings, ministers or officials, virgin youths or maidens, and so forth. Remember, he said, appear in various forms, use a transformation body to appear as if you are king, queen, etc. So some kings and queens are not maybe not real physical king and queen, but the manifestation of the bodies, if they are benevolent and kind, then maybe they are a bodhisattva manifestation. Okay. And so forth. And even prostitutes, widows, profligates, thieves, butchers, or dealers in contraband doing the same things as these kinds of people, why they praise the Buddha vehicle and cause them to enter somebody in body and mind. So the Buddha appeal, request all the future monks, nuns, bodhisattva, saints, to please use their power of transformation to appear in different fields of life, in different jobs in different positions, even as prostitutes, as butchers, to doing the same job with them. Appear like a prostitute with the prostitute's people, and therefore 
mingling with them, and then slowly teach them, inspire them to know the Buddha teaching, the saintly teaching. So how much sacrifice any Buddha or Bodhisattva has to undergo, nobody would know. Even become prostitute, even become butcher. Though these are even against the precept, but you, as Bodhisattva, must do it, so that you can befriend these kind of people. They are very difficult for any prostitutes or butchers to understand anything about Dharma, about true teaching. So you even have to appear to be like them, and then bring them into the true path. So we should never look down upon anyone in any position, any job, however lowly or however despicable in our opinion, we should always have respect, because they have Buddha nature inside anyway. Hmm? Okay? One time I recited a poem about an uh, artisan, you know, artisan or a prostitute, how sad she was when her so-called client left her in the middle of the night, she begged him to stay, and he did not. And one of uh, your brothers criticized me, saying, Master, that's a prostitute poem that you recite. And I say, she is a Buddha too. And at that time, I really meant it, and I really understood it. I don't just say that, but I really know it. Many things just like when you understand it, but you cannot explain it to others. Yeah, yeah, because you just enlightened at that moment for that thing, that subject, that object alone, yeah? One time I read one sentence in some of the Zen book, you know, meditation book, Zen book somewhere. It say like this in Chinese, okay? I repeat Chinese first so that I can remember in English. Uh, I don't Meaning, I am enlightened all by myself. No one is my master. I really understood that sentence, deeply understood, knowingly, and know it so well, clearly, to me. So, oh, I feel very good. I taught the disciples in Taiwan at that time. I said, you repeat all this. Is this true? Is this true? I even forget that I'm their master. If I told them to, to repeat like that, how would they even respect me anymore? I did not care because I understood the true meaning of it. So I taught all of them at that time, repeat after me. <laughs> I alone enlightened myself. No one is my master. Repeat it. And every day we do that. Ah, okay. Ah, and one of my so-called non-resident disciple, as she went to America to give initiation to some people in America. And I told her, you have to tell them also after initiation to repeat this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the nun did, and then revolt again. <laughs> they say, well, she's arrogant. <laughs> and she teach against my teaching, it's not true. I is the one who told her to say that, because I realized the, really the meaning of it. And later I say, okay, don't, don't say that no more, because, <laughs> because I realized that it's only me who understood it, and they understand nothing. <laughs> so I realized that enlightenment, you can't pass on, okay? And you, you always enlighten in some, in some subject after another, but not all the time and not in all subject. But when you understand one thing, that is yours. And only yours, yes. And other people might not be able to grasp it. Because it's not the words, it's, it's your realization, it's your enlightenment in it. My God, I thought everybody would understand it. Oh, tell them, go teach them, teach everyone. I myself do it the same. Yes? It's, it's the rest of the answer to what you asked me earlier about why I was crying yesterday. Because and you it's, realize something. Yeah, it's related to what you're saying now. Mm. Um, Master, that to be honest, many times I, I struggled to know about you or not. And 
I always had what I called an internal master, which mm. was a voice that guided me and still told me to listen to you and mm. still told me to trust you and still mm. told me to come here mm. and to follow you. Mm. And I cried yesterday at a moment when they were the same voice at the same time. Yeah. Um, when your voice and my internal master were at the same time speaking, the same voice ah. was one of the moments that I cried. Very good. Um, and what you just said reminded me of, of that. And so I wanted to finish answering your question from before. Very good. <laughs> okay, I was just concerned about you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. That may be something I said that uh, trigger you or uh, some sadness in you. Okay. That that you might feel guilty about something. Okay. That's all. Okay. Good. Good that you know. Good that you know. Yeah. It's like that. Whatever we know, we just know. We can't explain it to somebody else because it's such a simple sentence. Yeah. I enlighten myself alone. Nobody is my master. And I really know that, what it means. And then I teach everybody because I was so happy this is the truth. <laughs> and nobody understand another. <laughs> and I told my nun to tell the new disciple in America that revolt against her. They wrote letter to me saying, that nun is very bad. She, she, she told us that you are not our master. <laughs> 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 that we alone are our own master, nobody is master. That means she disregard you. I said, no, no, I told her to tell you. <laughs> God. It was a very funny, funny, uh, years ago, you know, decades ago. But this is like that. And later I realized my, my dumb height, you know, meaning <laughs> my, <laughs> my stupidity. So I tell them to stop it, stop it. They don't understand, so forget that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Just like in some of the Zen, uh, Zen story, uh, one of the master, you know, uh, yelled very loud into one of his disciples' ears, and then he was dead for three days. <laughs> but then, after he regained his ear sight again, he come and, and cried to his master, complaining, and said, I don't hear that no more. Understand? When he was deaf, he heard the inside voice inside music. And when he regained his ear sight again, it's usual he tried to listen outside, and then he won't get it no more. <laughs> yeah, similar like that. If you don't ask me to yell at you, it's different, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that master and that disciple is a different situation. Just like I say, I'm alone, enlightened, and no one is my master, you know? And I understand that completely, but I don't know how to explain it to you, okay? Okay, now, continue before the calendar ends. <laughs> so the Buddha even uh, encouraged, required, requests on the monks, saying the people in the future. After the Buddha went to Nirvana, he said, you do this, do that, do anything you can to awaken other beings, to lead them into the true path, to be even prostitutes, but Hmm? Imagine, huh? you are saint, enlightened, knowing, and you have to use your power to manifest yourself as a real, like a physical prostitute, as a real physical butcher, in order to befriend these people who are supposed to be in a lowly spiritual level, who has no chance to know any master because of their position, okay? And their background, and their companies, and their job. Very difficult for them to understand anything. So you, the saint, have to use your spiritual power to be like them in order to teach them the right way of life, the right way of life. Even Jesus, Say he forgave the prostitute, meaning he probably gave her initiation, and even his disciple roared at him, hmm? criticized him. Give her initiation, and then people, his disciple, criticize him. So only enlightened master are non-judgmental, okay? Are so tolerant, so loving, and so kind. I made some offering, a substantial sum offering to a temple 
in Europe because I knew the old abbot. He's gone now. He's gone now. The new one coming. The old abbot was an ascetic monk, very good monk. He's mostly skinny and very funny, very funny. He went to my house sometimes, stay in my house, also, of course, with other disciples. And he and other monks are very much respectful of me and loving me very much. So I still remember that temple, and I give some donation to repair the temple and all that. I have reverence and love for the old monk. The former abbot, sadly, he is gone. Are you better, love? You have the heart pack I give you. Thank you very much. What's your name? My name is Edwin. Edwin. Yes. Thank you, Edwin. Yes. God bless you. Thank you very much, Master. And take good care of yourself while you are I around will. here, because we we are not like a hotel. You don't have enough comfort for you. Yes. It we never have because I, too many people. We can never have enough rooms for everyone. Yes, what is it, my love? Hi, Master. Hi. This, this is the first time I've come to see you. First time I see you. Yes. I see that. We're both the same. <laughs> I've been a Hare Krishna for 15 years. Oh, Hare Krishna to Hare, you. Hare Krishna, Master. Yes. And so many things you've said yesterday and today from the sutras that have made me realize I was with the right guru and he's passed on now. What's um, his name? His uh, Krishna, name? Krishna Das Swami. Oh, yeah. yeah. A loving he, monk. He, he was master. He, he, he made me feel the love of God than any other person I've ever known. Oh, wonderful for you. Thank you. But I'd like to just say two things now. Mm. His name is Edwin. My surname is Edwin. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I just want to say that everything happens for a reason and I can feel his presence right now. Yes. The... All the points you've made today about the Vedic scriptures, all the... It's the same like your mother is, would say it, to you. Yeah, it is exactly I'm sure. and yes. the continuation. But the love of Master, is, there's four words my Guru Maharaj always repeated to me. Please forgive me. I'm not trying to bring... Yeah? Matri, no, no. Yeah. Why? Matri Devo Baba, worship your mother as if she's Lakshmi Narayan herself. What Pit, was that? Okay. Ma, Matri Devo Baba, mat, like Mataji, but Matri Devo Baba. So worship, any, any female is our mothers. Oh. And we should worship them as if they're God sent by God that way. Okay. Pitri Deva Baba, our fathers are sent to us. Love and respect our fathers. But he always used to say the third one was most important. Acharya Deva Baba. The spiritual master and the guru who's sent, can, they're the only ones who can take us back to God. Yes. Our original mothers and fathers are there. They give us worldly knowledge. They help us. They, they give us all the things we need in this world to yes. equip us for this world. Mm -hmm. But it's only a spiritual master or a guru who can send us back to the spiritual world mm -hmm. and connect us back to God. Just watching, I've watched many of your disciples on different lectures. Mm -hmm. And just watching the way you chastise them for the love of one disciple, Guru Maharaj always used to say, any spiritual master or guru has to be heavy. Because their relationship with their disciples Strict, you mean, is yes. to get them to go back to God. Yeah. Unconditional love. Yes. Master, I'd just like to say thank you. All I've felt here since I've been here for two days is unconditional love. Wonderful. Absolutely. By the candor of your own disciples, they're, they're a living example to you. And I yeah, they are. And I could... They are. They're, they're, uh, they're absolutely... <laughs> but even this is... We're children. We yeah, are children and we're trying to find our way through. And you've been sent to show us the best way back to God. Thank you, my love. And we're not perfect. But Master, please, thank you very, very much. I really, really do love you from my heart. And I will do the best to be one of your, your following disciples. Yeah. Thank you. Bless Hare Krishna, is, Master. Bless is your guru who taught you the right things in the right way and the humility that he taught you. And the enlightenment that he led you to. Please forgive me if I've offended in any way whatsoever. No. I, did, I did know the protocol, so I was just holding back. And this was the right moment. No. Because the young gentleman, the yeah. things he said, yeah. really, really touched me. The fact that his inner voice and your voice came to him at the same time, that is probably the most perfect realization one can have. I and your masters are one. Thank you. Really, they're Absolutely. working together to uplift humankind. Yes. We have no competition between each other. We love each other and we are 
buddies. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Master. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your loving comments and blessed be your Guru forever. May he always guide you and never leave you. Even though with me, my assistant, may he always be your Guru, the best and always guide you in perfection. And may you always remember him, your inner master. <laughs> okay, all right. Ah, this is very emotional to me. <laughs> Any gurus are precious. In India, they revere guru more than God. They say, what got to me? Just throw me into the sea of suffering of existence. Only my guru liberates me, uh, love me, protect me, and take me home. They praise guru all the time. Please forgive me again. I don't mean to interrupt. But there was what you said about the, because I've followed martial arts all my life. So when you said that about these things, the Shaolin monks uh -huh. have this, yeah, yeah, yes. the candles burnt upon their head as a self-sacrifice that they will do the best they can for mankind. Yes. Even what they're learning is to serve their nation, to serve their community. Yeah. So when I heard you say that after all this time, it was such an enlightening thing to understand why these three, uh, it was really, really yeah. wonderful. I never mentioned it before. Yeah. And, <laughs> And haven't come here. Yeah. All the Shaolin monks, all the Buddha Dharma, everything is yeah. this whole place. <laughs> it just where, happened already. They, yeah, they, absolutely. They There's exist a, before we bought it. Very, so I just keep it as is. No, I was going to uh, maybe ask for a Jesus uh, statues outside and some other master yeah. to put around to compete with all these uh, yeah. <laughs> monks. <laughs> some things we have removed. Yes. yes? and the ex-former owner removed. But the former owner also vegetarian. That's why we, they were very yes. happy that we bought it. He worried that some other business come in and do the killing and meat yeah. and every, every day, and he's very happy that we're vegetarian. <laughs> okay. Just, sorry, just one more thing and then... Tell me, tell me. What you were saying about the grains, what you explained about Buddha, you know, the Buddha saying about the grains. In Krishna consciousness, we keep a Kadashi mm -hmm. two days a month. Yes. And we fast from grains and beans. So it all ties in. Everything Guru Maharaj has said, mm. you, not only have you confirmed it, but you're taking it to that next level. And in this age, to have a living master gives everything a lot more potent. Mm. And we need to realize this is not just by chance. Guru Maharaj used to say, we are the most fortunate people on the planet yeah. in this age. It is. But we're the yeah. most unfortunate because at every given moment, we will turn our backs on God through some kind of distraction. Mm. We know the names of God, we know His love, mm. and yet at every given moment something will, Maya will play with us. Mm. But we are the most, in this age of Kali Yuga, we're the most treasured, yeah. because every person we meet, we're given God's name or His love in some way. Yes. And your disciples do live to this. Mm. You're the first person I hear who talks about the planet, or the cosmos, or the universe as one. Mm. You care so much about all the living beings. Just to see this. I remember when I watched the lecture. It's natural. Yeah, it just... But everyone is trying to destroy the world. Everyone is arguing in the world. Everyone is upset with their neighbors. And here comes Master who just talks about saving the planet. I remember watching you cry in one of your lectures because of so many animals that had perished. And, and it just left me that evening. It was just a totally, totally... I got introduced to you five years ago. Mm. And I've just always, always been interested. And to be sitting here now listening to you is almost like i'm listening to the lecture i had trouble focusing on you because i'm trying to be so please forgive me i will not take up no one else's what time are you doing? no no thank you everyone what are thank you, you so much uh, it, you it, this is for everybody it's, it's, it's a retreat and it's for enlightening people it's very good no, thank so, you very so much so they don't look at my calendar that you look no, at no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're saving me <laughs> Yeah, it's good that you uh, say something that is so noble and kind. It's uh, you uplifting them, you enlightening them. Yes, and I'm so proud to have you among this congregation. Ah, huh? yeah. Continue to be a good monk. Continue to be a good nun. Okay, and the Korean nun or whomever, where are they? Normally, I said a long time ago, the nuns and the monks should sit in the front, so that you don't rub. Ever with them and keep them more pure. 
There's a Korean monk there, nun said, you come sit here. The nuns and the monks come sit here. I just don't want people to rub off on you some of their mundane energy. If you like, please sit here. Huh? Normally, I tell them to let the monks and the nuns sit kind of a little separately, distantly. They have forgotten. And I can't keep saying that every day, you know. No matter if you think you're equal to them or not, you're monks and nuns and you deserve more respect and distance, okay? So you feel like you're still at home. When you go out and preach and then you mingle with people, it's different. Here, come here, sit. <laughs> yeah. If you like to there, it's fine. And the Hindu nun, you stay there. Okay, you sit. Come uh, samita. <laughs> That's all I know. Anashio. <laughs> and Hindi, I don't know much, only Bahut Acha. Bahut Acha. Bahanji. Sister, great sister. G is mean great, okay? So if you don't know any other Hindi, you just say Namaste G, G, then it's fine. People know you respect. Okay. Can I continue now? You have any more? No. Oh. So your calendar is very short. <laughs> I, I was happy that he take over some of my calendar, but now he stopped. We <laughs> feel free, okay, to speak anything you want. You also? Okay. Ah, good, wonderful. I can forget my calendar for now. <laughs> I just, Tell me. One question on the yes. poem that you were talking about that was, you were reciting, that you said that you knew she was a Buddha, that poem? The poem? Yes. You said you, you knew she was a Buddha or something? Yes, yes. Uh, were you saying, like, she had come back as, from, as a Buddha? Or she was like, we're all... No, like, I said she had, she's also the Buddha. I mean, everyone has Buddha yeah, inside. That's what, okay. That's what I was just wanting to clarify. Okay, okay. I did not predict anything. I just looked as no, a soul level. I didn't know she was... I didn't know she was no, no, no. Back. It's not like, like that, no. Okay. I just say it as a fact that she has Buddha inside and we should have the same respect. And I say that because that moment of realization, of true statements, okay? But if I say that to other people, maybe they don't understand what I'm talking about. Maybe that's why you're a little bit confused. I did not predict. I state the fact that she's a Buddha, so there's no need for him to, to talk to me like that about her. Uh, that's... What yeah. I was thinking, but I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, it's clear now? Thank you. Okay. I thought you took over my calendar, but you just have a short question. Fine. So I still have to continue. <laughs> okay. When I said that to that Vietnamese disciple, I really understood that. I really meant it as well. But when I say it now, it's not the same like at that moment. Because I really meant that. I really knew that. I really understood that she's a Buddha inside. I look at the soul level, you know. Sometimes I look in different eyes, different eyes. Yeah? I, I had a question, actually. Something you said a long time ago mm -hmm. um, made me think of something. But since you're inviting calendar talking, I figure I'll ask. Um, it's about doubt, Master. I, I wonder about how doubt works in the mind. Because it's interesting that sometimes it seems not like my mind is doubting something that it believes. It's like I have two minds, one that believes and uh -huh. one that, that doubts. Yes. Um, earlier today, for example, I, I discovered a tree in the, mm. our right. meditating area. Mm. And it was, like a it was a very powerful tree. It kind of called out to me. Mm. And I touched it, and it, it felt like maybe Buddha tree or something like that. Mm. Um, and I felt this powerful energy from it. But mm. I, I doubted it. And I, I, had my, I, ha I had somebody else come, and I just said, hey, touch this tree. And they did, and they smiled for a second. And then after a few seconds, I saw like the, this tree reaction. And you, I'm like, oh, you feel it too. You too feel and, it. And, and I knew that it was true. But then uh -huh. also the other side, the other brain doubted it. And I had <laughs> another person touch the same tree and uh -huh. watch the same thing okay. on their face a third time. And yes. I know in my heart, that this tree is powerful. Still doubt. There's still that voice somewhere in the brain that says, uh, no, you know, and I don't Kill know that voice. <laughs> how? How do I kill that voice, Master? Just ignore it. Okay. You are a smart person. You should know which is 
correct which is not i do yeah so then but the voice listen to yourself still talks to me uh, ignore it okay. okay okay you are a smart person you know what's right what's wrong okay okay no need to die when something is real i told you guys many uh you know some times ago last year or something in one of the lecture i say in see who say these tree that tree that, many of them on the fifth level even mm. Uh, at least third level or four level. I found one of them. Yes. So they are in the world to bless the world. How else would they be able to give oxygen to us? I say all oh, the trees, you know, some of them very high level. And I point to some of the trees and see what it they are fifth level, okay? And they're blessing the world. And we are the one who kill them without thinking okay so you experience one of that but if you touch a tree again tomorrow you might not feel the same okay it might not uh, reveal itself to you okay so don't be surprised if tomorrow you come touch and huh nothing happened maybe i was wrong yesterday and you doubt again <laughs> don't do that be spontaneous be a child except you become a child you cannot enter the kingdom of god what is kingdom of god is is this blissfulness that you feel inside the happiness you know the childlike innocence fearless okay only love and happy happiness that is a child the kingdom of childhood okay kid they don't fear anything they're always happy okay all right i tell you one story when sometimes when your mind is pure you perceive things around you and other time you don't okay uh one time i was in sihu Mm, I took care of some of the workers, no, I mean, SMTV worker or some resident, and I told them they have to buy a sofa, because it, it, the office is very austere, you know, only a table and uh, a swivel chair, yes, and, uh, and a computer, <laughs> nothing else, austere. We were so hurried to make the SMTV that I have not allowed time to do the decoration for them. I said, we have to do it now. The war is starting soon. We must do it now. Forget about decoration, because I promised a month or two, another two months until the office finished. I said, why? It's all done. We have table, we have chair. I said, oh, we still need to decorate. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> we have to begin now. So we begin without any ado, you know, without any picture or decoration on the wall, nothing. Okay? But I say, you have to be comfortable, yeah, because you work all day and you need some sofa, okay? Sometimes if you're tired of sitting, maybe you can recline on the sofa and do some computer work. So I told them, <laughs> why are you laughing? That's what I told them, okay? A longer sofa and comfortable so that you can even, you know, resting while you're working. Or when you need to take a rest, a little nap, at midday, after lunch, or you just sit there comfy to meditate. Uh, they also have cushion, of course, and all that. But I say, no, sofa is more comfortable, so you can meditate. Uh, <laughs> understand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I told them to buy some sofa. Okay, they bought similar sofa for everybody, including for me. Oh, I told them I hate this sofa. Ah. <laughs> Uh, because it's so narrow, you know, and uh, very high in the back is okay, it's not all that. I say, I don't really like this sofa very much. I imagine you would buy, it because I didn't see their sofa yet. I only knew my sofa. It's a very narrow and a very high in the back, okay? I say, you okay with all this? They say, okay, Master, okay, we're okay with our sofa. Very comfortable, very comfortable. <laughs> to meditation or resting. You know, I say you can also sit there while you're eating, you know, take a rest from your computer. Yes, yeah, put your feet on, or meditate, or eating, you know, relax. Yeah, so you don't always have to work too hard, you know, all the time. Take a break, sit on the sofa, lay on it, do whatever, uh, read a book or whatever. Okay, fine. Listen to music, whatever. Okay, so we bought many sofas. I say buy as many as you can put in your room without crowding it, yeah? without uncomfortably crowding it. So they bought many. They bought some for me too. One. 
And I said, I don't like my sofa. You like yours? Oh yes, we're very comfortable. With it. We love it. We use it every day. I said, okay then. As, you, as long as you like it, it's okay. I don't want to keep changing my sofa again because it's heavy. You know, people have to buy it and bring it in, bring it out. So I said, okay, I accept my sofa, but I don't like it. I'm always very straight like that. Whatever I don't like, I cannot say, oh, I like, or it's okay. I just say, I don't like. <laughs> and loud and clear, but accepting, okay? I accept things doesn't mean I like it. I like things doesn't mean I have to have it, okay? So it's just like that. Okay, one day, after a while, you know, I went to their office. And I, I don't want to see how what they're working, if anything I could do to help to make them more comfortable, okay? Oh, they have good kitchen at that time. Big, big, big refrigerator. A good sink, everything brand new, everything, okay, comfortable. Not luxury, but comfortable. I said, oh, I like your kitchen. I will move in here, man. <laughs> I say that. And then I go to see their sofa. And they say, wow, this is exactly the sofa I want you to have. You know, oh, bright color, whitish color, and white with the curving a little bit back. It's like a, like a reclining sofa, but very big, white, uh, leather-like, but it's not leather, okay? Look very luxury and comfortable, inviting and big. You can sleep on it all day. So, wow, this is what I want. How come you don't buy me this kind of thing? <laughs> and they told me, Master, you have the same sofa. I say, what? No, it's not the same. Mine is green color, and the back is high, and the front is narrow. This is luxury, you know? Big, long, reclining, look like a royalty. And they're all very dumbfounded. Master, you had exactly the same. <laughs> I say, all right, okay, never mind. I don't mind. It, whatever, okay, as long as you're comfortable, at least you're comfortable. And I keep wondering about it, why they lie to me. <laughs> I know my sofa. It's not like that sofa. I know it. <laughs> and later I keep calling one after another. I say, tell me what kind of sofa you have there. <laughs> Just tell me, just between you and me. <laughs> Master, you know it. It's the same in your office. I say, no, I want the truth. I say, Master, I swear to God, it's the truth. <laughs> okay. I say, they are not very honest to me. I say nothing. I ask the other guy, describe to me the sofa that I saw the other day. <laughs> that I look in front of it and I say, it's a beautiful sofa. Describe it to me in color, detail. How big, how long, detail, color. What kind of color? And they told me exactly the same. Exactly the same like the other guy. It greenish, you know. <laughs> I say, is it big in the front? No, is it uh, okay? About this big. Then it's the same like my sofa. How about behind? Is it like this high? The same as my sofa. No, not again. I told you, tell me the truth. I just want to know why you told me it's the same as my sofa. But it's not the same at all. Why would I praise a sofa when I don't like it? <laughs> you know? If I don't like my sofa, why I praise the same one in your office? You know I'm very straight and honest. I never say things that is not true. No, Master, it's the same one. <laughs> Three, four of them, and all of them tell me the same thing. Oh, I was very frustrated. So I said, okay, tell me, is there another sofa somewhere that has been moved? Maybe before I was in your office, now it moved somewhere without you guys knowing. No, Master, he's always been here. He never has any other sofa anywhere else in the whole ashram. I say, how about in the International Garden? Is it the same? It's, I say, similar, Master, just different color. I say, what color? I say, green is also. I can't believe it. <laughs> and, then, and then they know each other. They say, yeah, Master, stand in front of that sofa and praise it. I say, she loved that style and that sofa. It's not. Just my eyes, see different. It's the same sofa, <laughs> exactly the same. They buy many and they give me one. And they have six, for example, like that. But I saw that day is completely different. It's the ideal sofa that I wanted them to have. What I wanted them to have in my mind is exactly the same as what I saw that day, but it doesn't exist at all anywhere in the ashram. 
<laughs> nobody ever bought it, nobody ever saw it. It's not anywhere. I asked the whole ashram, everybody, nobody saw anything like what I said. So you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah? I'm enjoying the story okay, either okay, way. Okay. You don't believe me, you ask some of the SMTV people. Yeah, yeah, the story is still circulating somewhere, but they probably think I'm cuckoo, you know? <laughs> How can I explain that? I said, really? It cannot be optical illusion because it's, the color is all different. The size is different. The style is very royal-like, you know, beautiful, reclining kind of sofa in your, you know, beautiful mansion somewhere. White color instead of green. How can you see green into white? I'm not colorblind. I saw all the color. This is pink, okay? This is creamy color. This is deeper pink. And this is yellow, uh, uh, lemon yellow, for example. I know all the color. This is purplish, okay? <laughs> this is deep purple. This is green. I'm not colorblind. I passed my driving license. <laughs> it's apple, red, green, mm? <laughs> white. <laughs> mauve color. They call it mauve. Something like that. Skin color, okay? Kind of. I'm not colorblind. How can a green sofa appear into white, sleek, and shining leather like, but it's not leather? Very inviting, very comfortable. Like you could stay there, sleep all day. And that's the sofa I wanted them to have. I told them to buy that kind of sofa. So I thought they bought it until I saw the difference. Until now, I still can't figure it out. <laughs> so I asked the heaven, what is it? You tricked me or something? Why, why did I see the, the sofa? Different color, different style, different size. This is your pure mind and make it like that. Yeah. Just like one day I sat in my office, uh, in the old house, I mean, made into office with dog sofa and bed all over around me, yeah, so that I can work and be with dogs at the same time. There's nothing really much that you can envy. And then I look outside before the dogs came long ago, when I first or second time came back to Taiwan, and I saw outside, oh, it's like Europe. Like European, it's not like the, the scenery that I have seen before, not like Taiwan style, not the same. So, I said, where am I? I said to myself, where am I? I thought I came back to Taiwan. How come I am in Europe? The energy, you understand? The scenery and the energy feeling is all Europe. It's not Taiwan at all. Different level of energy, different elevation. So I couldn't believe myself. I thought, I came back to Taiwan already. How come I'm in Europe? <clears throat> Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in Taiwan. Because the, the old table and all that is a Taiwan. It's just around, surrounding, is like Europe. So I call everybody again. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Even one sister, the cook from Loving Hood in, in Austria, you know? I call her also, after all, because I don't believe the Taiwanese people. I thought they, they just say what I want to hear. So I call a Vietnamese cook. So I call her last, you know, last minute. And last one I call her. Am I still in Austria with you? Am I in somewhere in Europe? Are you coming here with me or you came after? Am I, where am I? Am I in Taiwan or in anyway? Hawaii? I know I went back to Taiwan. How come I see Europe? She said, you are in Taiwan, master. <laughs> Oh, so I say, okay, I give up, whatever, as long as I feel good. Yeah, the energy is elevated into different kind of more developed type of country. Taiwanese people, they're very kind, but they're very casual about their environment. Many places are very casual, you know. Maybe they're more inside, they don't care much of the outside. Yeah, uh, I'm telling you, yeah, there's no end to all kind of things that I saw, yeah. Master, talking about the trees and energy, I was recently in Vancouver, Canada, mm -hmm. and my husband took me into a little village called the Whistler. It has three beautiful lakes, like the one oh, picture one. behind mm -hmm. you, yes. Mm -hmm. And talking about trees, I was so touched 
we went into mountain uh, to look the waterfalls mm. and coming inside mm. humongous big trees a moment i stepped inside of the starting in a in a in a wood area i'm feeling the vibration of the tree but immense love. Mm. Lo I start crying mm. and my husband was in front of me. He looked back and he said, what happened? I said, I just felt the love, love from the, from tree, the trees. The forest, yes. I was just going and touching them and sending the love back mm, yeah. to them. It was so touching mm. that the energy of love mm. and the vibration, so beautiful, yeah. pure love yes. giving. They are giving yes. us love. That's so true. That's beautiful. true. Beautiful. That is true, when you can experience that. It is true like that. Every being is living, yeah, and very pure inside. If you tune into them, if you can, and they really talk to you, they really send you love and send you enlightenment, encouragement, yeah, all kinds of things. Uh, yes, yes, okay. Hi, Master. Hi. This is the first time being here. Uh, oh, fancy, wait, me yeah. too. Yes. <laughs> Um, waiting for this moment, 20 years, yes. Oh. Um, I just want to say thank you, and in these days, um, I feel much love. Um, I have been seeing you inside, uh, like um, you in different time of life, mm. um, different uh, manifested bodies, mm. in all these days, mm. all, all the time. Yeah, I don't have words for express uh, oh. all I am feeling. Okay, no. just love. Okay, um, enjoy. Thank, thank you. you. And brothers and sister from Peru wants to. Oh, they're lovely people. Many faces, uh, they are lovely. Oh, lovely. Please send them my my regards also. Yes. Yeah, my love. Oh, yeah. Okay, we go back to the Buddha now, huh? Okay, the Buddha say that people should not be lying should not tell lies. And then the Buddha say conclusively that this is the fourth clear and unalterable instruction on purity given by the first come ones and the Buddhas and the world honor ones in the past, and also him as well, past present, meaning it's a true teaching from all the saints, not just the Sekamoni Buddha. Good. So he say, Therefore, Ananda, one who does not cut off lying, is like a person who carves a piece of human excrement, excuse me, he said, to look like Chandana, I mean, maybe uh, sandalwood, something. Uh, he wants to carve a tattoo from sandalwood, but he used excrement instead, hoping to make it fragrant. Yes, a sandal wood. Yeah, he he want he hope that piece of <coughs> poo becomes a sandal wood. He is attempting the impossible. Wow, that extreme. The Buddha warns you, warns us that if you don't keep the precept, even just one of them, like the lying precept, saying the truth, if you don't keep it, if you don't avoid lying then you are attempting the impossible, like making a piece of poo become a sandalwood statue, like that, okay? I teach the bhikkhus, the Buddha said, I teach the monks that the straight mind is the bodhimanda, I mean the method of cultivation, straight mind you must have, I mean clean, honest, huh? Keep in precept, and that they should practice the four awesome departments in all their activities, since they should be devoid of all falseness. How can they claim to have themselves attain the abilities of a superior person? I mean, if they're not uh, full of truth, yeah. If they are just falseness, then. They cannot claim to be a superior person, meaning like sainthood or somebody of great moral principle. That would be like a poor person falsely calling himself an emperor, 
For that, he would be taken and executed. Wow, that extreme. If we don't keep the precept, it is truly that extremely unfavorable for our practice. It's like the opposite, the opposite uh, direction. Somebody don't translate to you? You okay? Sava? <laughs> Bonnie? <laughs> Bono? Mm. Okay. He just so mesmerized, he just then he forgot to help you translation. <laughs> he just sit there. <laughs> you saw the light? Big, big, big light, big light. Big light where? See, shock me, sorry. I saw. Uh, my light? Yeah, very, very bright. Very bright, sorry. so you forgot. I, I, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> but really, really. Good. <laughs> you have good excuse. <laughs> Forgive him. <laughs> it's a good excuse. I really mean it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I saw him like uh, a stiff, you know, sitting there. <laughs> so it's okay. If you see the light, bless you. Good. Good excuse. Really mean. Okay. Don't worry. Continue to see the light. Thank Forget you. about him. <laughs> light is more important. <laughs> And later you can tell him, okay? okay. Or he can listen again by of TV. Okay, sorry, or, Master. Uh, it's all right. You see the light is good for you. <laughs> very, very bright. Yeah. And bigger, I'm glad. bigger, 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 bigger. Yeah, I'm glad you did, okay? <laughs> so don't worry. I forgive you. Okay, thank you, Master. <laughs> I'm glad for you, why forgiving? You do nothing wrong. Hmm? <laughs> I'm just feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> You have to learn English. Huh? I told everybody learn English. The most common language. Eh? Easy to translate, easy to understand. Do you understand? <laughs> good. Very good. <laughs> okay. So the Buddha say if we don't keep the precepts, the moral principle, okay, by avoiding tell lie, by being honest by being compassionate, no killing, no eating meat, by uh, being pure, yeah, in body and mind, then if we practice, it's as if we falsely claim that we are the king and we will be chop head. That extreme, that dramatic, that's what the Buddha wants to really, really tell us. It is really important to keep precept. He went into all these extreme examples to make us really understand and believe what he's saying. The Buddha don't tell lie, okay? He would never. What for? He's a monk, okay? He don't tell lie. He has no reason to. He has no reason. If you keep a precept or not keep a precept, would the Buddha become any better huh? for himself, benefit him in any way, make him fatter, more handsome, more worship? No? Yes or no? no? No. So he has no reason to tell his monks any lie at all. So he told the truth. Yeah? Even then he went to all the extreme uh, parable, uh, example, so that really they have to know this is very, very, very important to keep the moral standard. Huh? Okay. My humble opinion. Okay. Now, much less should one attempt to usurp the title of Dharma King when the cause ground is not true, the effects will be distorted. One who seeks the Buddha's body in the Buddha wisdom, enlightenment. Yeah. In this way, it's like a person who tries to bite his own navel. Can you do that? <laughs> I can. <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. Meaning impossible. Can you bite your navel? No. No? Ah, you know. Even Supreme Master cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you think Master can do everything? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Buddha means impossible. If you don't keep the precept, it's impossible for you.
to be anything but these above mentioned demons, ghosts, and uh, whatever, Yaksa, huh? Dracula, whatever he meant. Yeah. So, who could possibly succeed? He asked a question, but the question answers itself. So, if monks' minds are as straight as the lute string, lute have strings, like an instrument, musical instrument, mm. if the bhikshu's minds are as straight as the lute strings, true and real in everything they do, then they can enter samadhi and never be involved in the deeds of demons. I certify that such people will accomplish the bodhisattva unsurpassed knowledge and enlightenment. Uh, he guaranteed that even from the mouth of the Buddha. He guaranteed that if we kept the precept and seeking enlightenment through meditation at the same time, he guaranteed that you will be enlightened. You'll be a saint. Yeah. So believe the Buddha, even if you don't believe me. Okay. What I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha said again, any explanation counter to it is the teaching of the Papian, means heretic. Oh, it's one o'clock, not true. <laughs> My calendar really <laughs> run out. <laughs> oh, yeah, tomorrow, yeah? <laughs> okay, cut and call long enough. Thank you. Ah, I thank you for being patient and listening with awe and ooh, ah, and <laughs> hurrah and all that. That's really keep me awake. <laughs> thank you, huh? Yeah, for understanding and thank you for being good. I don't know if I can finish. I don't know if I can finish what I promise you during this retreat, retreat, but we all try, okay, huh? Amitabha. Okay, chocolate. Chocolate. No flakes. Give it to the old brother Leech here from Ireland. I have so much respect and regard for you guys. So high in age and uncomfortable still go all the way here to sit on the floor. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Surely God will bless you. If I will go, I bless you. Share with your neighbor, okay? Sharing is a virtue, right? <laughs> Bless you. God bless you. All the master gurus bless you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being good. See you tomorrow.